our Q1 FY24 earning conference call. With me, I have Mahindra Group President, Operation Business Development and Diversification, and Subramanim Group CFO, and SGA, our uh, Investor Relations Advisor. Our investor presentation is now available on the websites of the stock exchanges and also on our company's website. I would like to start by emphasizing our strong start to the financial period marked by impressive financial results. We have achieved a record-breaking quarterly core operating revenue of 179 crores, setting a high bar for performance. Looking ahead, our outlook remains positive with expectation for a consistent growth trajectory in our core operations. Operationally, we have achieved a significant milestone by managing the highest volume of tons in a single quarter. Notably, our commitment to excellence is reflected in our improved EBITDA margin, which has surged by approximately 260 basis points to reach 22.9%. This accomplishment has been made possible by the dedicated efforts of our team, who executed various contracts with remarkable efficiency. Despite encountering inflationary pressures impacting our cost segments, we have successfully navigated through these challenges. As we highlighted in our previous call, any softness observed in our margin was transitory, and we remain optimistic about our future performance. The EBITDA margins achieved in Q1 FY24 aligned with our earlier guidance, reinforcing our confidence in sustained stability and growth moving forward. Over the past two years, we have strategically allocated a substantial capital expenditure, notably directed towards the development of our waste to energy plant. As we enter FY24, this period sets the stage for a sturdy foundation of growth in our core operational revenue. A growth journey is poised to gain further momentum with the commissioning of our collection, transportation, processing and disposal of construction and demolition project, CND, before the end of the fiscal year 2024. Our business stands ready to embark on a promising uh, journey of growth. The company is currently engaged in proactive pursuits within the space of CND and biomining projects and we anticipate sharing positive developments on these initiatives in the forthcoming quarters. Our endeavor stands as a testament to India's steadfast dedication to uphold sustainable principles, especially as it takes the lead within the G20, a pivotal platform for international collaboration and resolving critical global challenges. Our corporate undertaking mirrors this unyielding commitment to sustainability principles underscored by our resolute aim to provide value to each of our stakeholders. Thank you, and now I hand over the call to Mr. Mahindra, our group president who oversees operations and new business development. Over to you, Mahindra. Thank you, Shaju, and good afternoon, all of you. As leaders in the industry with over two decades of experience, we have consistently employed cutting-edge methodologies and technologies bolstered by dedicated and knowledgeable teams to responsibly manage municipal solid waste. Building upon this foundation, we successfully commissioned a state-of-the-art 1,000 ton per day integrated waste to energy plant at Pimpi Chinchwak City. Earlier this month, a, true, a truly historic moment unfolded for the company as the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi inaugurated our advanced waste to energy facility in Pimpi Chinchwak. An outstanding facet of this project lies in its alignment with India's green energy open access policy, making PCMC the first ever municipal corporation to utilize waste to energy plant generated electricity for captive consumption. Additionally, the entire project is designed to use the treated water from the sewage treatment plants, thus reducing the reliance on ground fresh water for its operations. This project has two benefits. Not only will the corporation save approximately INR 21 crore per annum by reducing their energy bill, but more importantly, this project will save about 7 lakh tons of carbon dioxide annually, equivalent to 1.5 lakh tons, uh, 1.5 lakhs of passenger car emissions. Uh, let me also talk a bit more about our current operations. The, current, the company has accomplished an unprecedented milestone by achieving an all-time high in the volume of municipal solid waste tonnage managed. 
We have also attained the highest ever, ever quarterly core operating revenue, setting a new benchmark for our achievements. During quarter one of this fiscal year, the company and its subsidiaries handle an impressive 1.2 million tons of waste, representing a significant 14% year-on-year increase. This can be attributed to the full-scale implementation of operations at the recently acquired contracts, ramping, our, ramping up our existing collection and transportation sites, and the increased tonnage processed at the waste processing operations. Our core operations in the CNG business have been performing in line with our expectations. The CNG business segment per se for quarter one FY24, the company effectively handled 0.45 million tons, reflecting a growth of about 11% compared to the previous year. Additionally, the waste processing business managed about 0.75 million tons, demonstrating a growth of about 15% compared to the previous year. Our commitment to the circular economy extends to the cities we serve, where we integrate circular economy principles to amplify resource extraction and facilitate outreach initiatives. More and more cement producers are recognizing the value and potential of our refuse-derived fuel, that is RDS, as an alternative to coal as, as a fuel. We sold more than 27,700 tons of RDF in the current quarter, a whopping 44% increase over the previous year. A point to note here is that the sale of RDF is currently a margin neutral event, but we expect this to improve going forward. Further highlighting our dedication to sustainability and comprehensive resource recycling, we successfully recycled 365 tons at our Varanasi site in the quarter one of this fiscal year. On the waste processing segment, volumes handled at our operational sites have increased and disposal of processed waste, such as compost and RDF, has significantly improved. The start of our waste energy plant in Pimbridge and Schwartz, which was inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister, and our upcoming construction and demolition waste project in Mumbai, which is anticipated to come into operations by the fourth quarter of this fiscal year. The processing activities will witness a significant increase. We must mention that these, no, these processing projects normally have higher EBITDA margins as compared to the CNT operations. On the business development front, we continue to meticulously assess new contracts against our stringent internal benchmarks. As we had mentioned in last, last uh, earnings call, uh, in, this last quarter, in the last quarter, we participated in a large CNT tender in North India and a biomining tender in South India. We are reasonably optimistic about a favorable outcome in both of, both of these tenders. Our transformative journey will continue in the coming quarters and many more going forward. Our dedication remains steadfast in upholding the essence of this significant event, a harmonious fusion of leadership, visionary thinking, and an unwavering pursuit of a greener and more sustainable future. On to the financial aspects, let me get Enji involved here. Enji, over to you. Uh, thank you, Mahindra, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, our team continues to advance our 2023-24 priorities including increasing the profitability of our business through strong price discipline and an optimized cost structure. As I said in May 2023, this year is all about getting our pricing escalations passed through and cost control initiatives to be done in. It is also the year of continuing to set ourselves up for the core long-term growth by delivering on what we can control. Uh, coming to the consolidated uh, financial highlights of Q1 FY24, uh, we have reported operating revenue of rupees 179 crores as against 156 crores in the same quarter last year, which is an increase of 14%. Uh, in the quarter, the tonnage handle was 1.2 million tons as mentioned by Mahindra. This reflects a strong volumes growth of 14%. The first quarter, our operating EBITDA margin has expanded by 260 basis points, uh, driven by a couple of factors. One is the pricing improvement, second is the escalation getting through over the past period, and a general increase in volume. The margin growth has been aided, let me repeat that, by a few of the old escalations which were not passed through coming into the system. And this is not reflecting the true uh, reflective of the operational benefit that we have yet to benefit from the same contracts. We deliver this result despite some things that we can't generally control, like the stubborn higher OEM input cost inflation, and this margin growth is despite a 26% increase in the wage bill. The increase in the wage bill is mainly due to higher employee count arising from higher processing activities and the NASIC operations, 
which were absent in the year ago period. And this has seen an increase of about 1,000 in our headcount. And this is also because of a PLIT scheme related to staff salary increases initiated last year. Sequentially, the wage and staff salary bill is up by approximately 4%. Uh, in short, the company has registered a 7% increase uh, at its EBITDA compared to 49 crores in Q1 FY23 and an EBITDA margin being 22.9%. This quarter's EBITDA is also a record high quarterly EBITDA in absolute terms. Total fat for the first quarter stood at 23 crores as against 29 crores in the same quarter last year. The dip being weighed by higher interest and depreciation expenses related to the incremental debt taken at the pre-processing site and also due to the NASIC CNP project. Gross debt of the groups as of June 23 stood at 381 crores and net debt is at 322 crores, suggesting a net debt to equity of 0.5x. The weighted cost of, uh, uh, of debt uh, for the group stands at 9.7% and the interest coverage is at a healthy 5.6x. A word on the client concentration, uh, uh, due to the consistent effort of the company over the last couple of years, the top three clients today contribute approximately 55% of our revenue, and this was a high 74% in FY2019. All these top three clients have a credit rating between AA and a AA plus with stable outlooks. Uh, that's all from my hand. Uh, now we can open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question? Please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Bala Murli from Oman Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, welcome. Uh, I want to know more about this. Uh, uh, Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Murli. We are not able to hear you clearly. Uh, just a yeah, I would like to know about this uh, Pune project, West Energy project, or uh, what kind of uh, revenue we can generate from in this year and the uh, next year. Uh, so, we will be seeing commercial operation of the PCMC Waste Energy by the Q3 of the year. The plant load factor will be around 30 to 40 percent in the first, in the third quarter, scaling up to around 60 percent by Q4. On a steady state of affairs, assuming an 85% plant load factor, uh, the project is likely to give an annual revenue of around 65 crores. So, if you were to look at the revenue contribution, I would say around 18 to 20 crore of revenue would be recognized in the financial year ending March 2024. And if things go as per plan, around 58 to 65 crores in FI25. Okay. And, uh... Uh, other than this uh, demolition, the Mumbai contract, uh, demolition contract, uh, we don't have any other contract which can contribute to the revenue in this year or the next year? Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, after the construction debris and the waste to energy, these are the two new projects that the revenue will be coming in. Additionally, the two small power shipping contracts which the company backed, which is yet to start operations, which is in the one in PCMC and in Nagpur, they will also start contributing from Q2 slash Q3 onwards. So these are the four contracts which will be uh, starting to generate revenue for in the current financial year. Okay. And, the, and uh, at what volume uh, we are able to generate some... Uh, EBITDA positive, tax positive, and the RDS says as of now we are making a 20,000 ton dispatch. So, if you, what would be the volume figure if we need to make some uh, bottom line from that uh, RDS? Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Bala, we couldn't clearly hear your question. No, yeah, in RDS we are dispatched around 20,000 ton, uh, so, but it is a uh, break even uh, as of now. So at what volumes so we can able to make uh, some uh, profit from that uh, RDF, RDF sale? So, uh, I mean, you know, 
We will probably be breaking, uh, will be breaking even at, at higher volumes, but it's not so much about the volumes. It's more about that as and when uh, clients get convinced uh, with the consistency of our RDF, they will be paying us a higher revenue. So we expect that when we hit a steady state of about 50,000 tons of uh, sale, uh, by the time we would be in a position to command a premium and hence a positive contribution in our RDF sale. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Anirban Manna, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks. Thanks for good set of numbers. So, uh, you mentioned about uh, 55 to 65 crores of revenue in FY25 incremental revenue. That's from Pimpri Chintwada Flab project. That's right. All right. So uh, in this year we can do 18 to 20 crores from this project. So uh, what can be the total revenue means uh, consolidated revenue including everything in FY24? Uh, so, on the core revenue front, I mean, we did around 675 crores uh, last year. So, we will be looking at around 18% growth on those numbers if things go as per schedule. Okay, means only core revenue. And for for contract? Contract revenue, uh, we don't foresee a significant balance of uh, revenue here because uh, the project at Pimpridge Road is almost completed. It's, it's, we just need a couple of around 12 to 14 crores of uh, remaining capex and these are administrative buildings and scaffolding and thereabouts. So we don't foresee a significant balance of project revenue for uh, to be done in the current financial year. Okay. Uh, means uh, the reason I am asking because contract revenue has reduced significantly uh, year on year because this quarter we have done 48 crores. Uh, last quarter we did around 40 crores, but one year previous, like uh, in Q1 FY23, we did around 84 crores. So it reduced significantly contract revenue I am talking about. So that's why I am asking. So the contract revenue is reflective of the capex that the company is doing because these are predominantly related account extension of 115 which reflects to projects under reboot where the assets are transferred to the client. So uh, the project revenue uh, is something which reflects the construction phase of the waste processing project. So since the waste processing project is almost completed and which uh, we are referring to the waste energy project here. So uh, we don't foresee any remnant of these contracts here. Okay, mean, means it, it would be uh, almost flat, like 40 crores on an average. It per should quarter. Be even lesser than that going forward because the capex phase is done from the company's point of view. Then the core revenue from that project starts coming and supplementing the number. All right, all right, got it, got it. Yeah, thanks, thanks. That was my question. Thanks. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Somitra Joshi, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah. Uh, so I... Uh... There was a little disturbance on the last part of it, so I just need uh, two or three clarifications here. Uh, so, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong. So, uh, against an estimated uh, revenue increase of around, I think it was in the range of 10 to 15 percent that we were expecting uh, last quarter, has that guidance been increased to 18 percent? Is that understanding correct? Has there been any change in that guidance of revenue increase for this year? Uh, so the revenue increase guidance is reflective of the speed at which the commencement of the operations likely to happen. So we were expecting the project to be ready uh, by end of Q3. Now from the way that things are shaping up, by the mid of Q3 itself the numbers are likely to start staring in. 
So that is why the numbers are being reflected there. And these are, we, we again repeat, these are core revenue trends that we are talking about. Sure, sure. Uh, and the second part would be uh, with respect to uh, the margins. So uh, firstly, congratulations on uh, whatever you had uh, predicted or had envisaged that has come to in this particular uh, quarter. So for this particular year, what are the operating margins that we should consider in our calculation? Um, so the margins that we reported in Q1 would form the base for us. There are two factors which kind of will influence the margins expansion. One is lower contribution of the contract revenue, which has been a drag on the margins. Going forward, we since the project revenue element is going to be smaller, so the the pressure on the margin will ease by itself. That is one. Second is uh, in the last couple of quarters, the company has proactively not recognized revenue which were booked under the escalation clauses of various contracts because of absence of elected members in various uh, corporations. Now, uh, that thing has changed. People have started coming, processes have started happening. So we have started recognizing few of these revenues. Bulk of it is still not recognized to the tune of around 14 odd crores from a single client, for example. So those things are getting rectified. So going forward, uh, absence of or fewer project revenue and secondly, billing as per the tender condition, which is core tonnage plus escalation. These will come and buff our uh, uh, revenue and EBITDA numbers. So on a steady state of affairs, I would suggest a 23 to 24% to be a very conservative EBITDA number for the current financial year and that will be built, uh, will form the basis for the period going ahead. So from a calculation perspective, we take around 22 on a very, very conservative basis. That should, that is something that probably we will do easily, correct? Is that understanding correct? That's a very safe assumption. Sure. Uh, so that's the second part to it. Now the third part is, uh, is there, uh, so I was just going through all the different uh, quarterly results. Uh, now one thing that comes into my mind, is there a seasonality aspect to the business? Uh, if yes, uh, does it play out in the Q2 and the Q3 part of it or uh, there's no such thing as seasonality and more or less over the uh, quarters, uh, maybe here and there, there might be some difference, but we do catch up and there's not a huge uh, seasonality impact that we see. Uh, the seasonality effect actually is not a major factor in the CMT contract, but in the case of our Kanjur uh, project, where biomining is an important element, and uh, given the monsoon season in Mumbai, which is almost three and a half. Okay. So my question arises from the monsoon season in Mumbai only. Yeah, go on. That's right. That's right. So to that extent, I mean, yes, the number, uh, our biomining activities come to a standstill, or or at least are much less intense than during the, than the normal month. But we use that time effectively for maintenance of our equipment, and secondly, it also overlaps with that of cement companies. Uh, with the maintenance shutdown of cement companies. So to some extent it plays out. But to answer your question, yes, I mean, uh, it's an important factor in the case of Kanjur project. But that, that would only be uh, with respect to like uh, the seasonality during the rain. So more or less the rains are stopped now. Uh, so let's say from now on probably the actual work will start. So the impact would be more or less if there is any impact. That is only in uh, the second quarter of it. Yeah, so September onwards, typically uh, things are things start getting to normalcy uh, in both uh, uh, biomining and even the waste to energy project that we'll see in the future. It's not on your trend. It's not something new, correct? It's not new. Yeah. Thank you so much for those uh, queries. Thank you so much for answering them. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Anj Manik from Equator Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, I have a couple of questions. The first one is related to the, uh, is there any element of revenue booking of previous years which which we did not recognize in earlier years and now has been booked in the current period? Yeah, approximately uh, 6.3 crores was a partial recognition of revenue which was uh, reversed in the previous period. So that has come through because the corporation has uh, released the same uh, in due time. Uh, so that is sitting in the books and that is also helping the margin expansion. 
because there is no associated cost with this revenue. Okay. Uh, and this is a second question. Uh, last time uh, you had said that there was around approximate 20 crore of revenue which was provided or not recognized due to the absence of the uh, uh, absence of the elected corporate members. What would be the amount for the current part? Yeah, so of the 20 odd crores, uh, 6.4 has been recognized in the current quarter. The balance as and when the corporation releases the funds on cash basis, this is the company will recognize the same in the books of accounts. And what would be the impact of current quarter? So 20 crore is for the FI23. So there must be some uh, revenue or escalation part in the current quarter which has not been recognized. So both of them put together. So uh, when we are talking about 20 crores, it's all related to FI23 period. So going forward, once things stabilize and normalize, so we would be recognize the escalation of the previous period and also raising bills for the current period. That's when the company is operating. Okay. And uh, sir, with respect to the Mangalore project, there was a news article where uh, we had stated we had just given the notice for the uh, for uh, for closure of any extension of the project, if you can guide with respect to that part. Uh, so we had a discussion with the client, uh, and the client has given us a schedule uh, for clearing all the outstandings over the next few months. Uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. so we have decided to, uh, to extend our contract. So the client will be extending our contract by six months. Okay? And the client has started paying us. I mean, at least started sticking to the schedule they have given us. So when are the reviews expected to be settled for this project? So a significant portion of the receivables uh, should be cleared by the end of the calendar or by end of the fiscal year at the most. Uh, the corporation also initiated a new tender uh, wherein the capex will be entirely funded by the client. Uh, the company is also very uh, looking forward to take uh, participate in these uh, tender. Okay, uh, that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neerav Dalal from May Bank Investment Banking Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Dalal. You're sounding very soft. Can you speak now? a bit louder? Yeah. Is it fine now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Please okay. Sir. Uh, I had uh, a few questions. First was, uh, in terms of uh, new contract wins, uh, has there been a slowdown in terms of the decision making and uh, when do you see uh, this to improve? Not really. I would not say slowdown. I mean, uh, I mean uh, in, in, at least the area of operations where we want to focus on. Uh, you know, as we had said in our speech, uh, we have already bid for a large uh, CNT contract in North Delhi, in, in North of India, uh, and, and then a couple of biomining projects uh, down south. So we don't see any slowdown in, uh, in, in terms of new opportunities. It is just that we want to be focused in the clusters that we are active in. Uh, got that. Got that. Uh, and uh, also, I, I just wanted to understand in terms of the growth uh, target that has been given of about 18% on the core business. So this core business would include the 15-18 crores of uh, new MSW processing that will come in from uh, the Pune project, right? That's right. Yeah. And then other than that, where do you see uh, the growth coming from? Does this assume any new contracts come in, coming in or uh, just the existing contracts? So we have few CNT contracts, as I said, that uh, this project in North India, I mean, you know, as and when uh, that happens and so on, that can be a, a, minute, that can be a big uh, growth driver. Uh, then some of these biomining projects, which are actually, uh, now there are a lot many opportunities of that this thing, which are short two to three year duration. Uh, and, and that gives us good top line. So uh, that is included in the 18% growth target on the core revenues that we are talking about. So it includes the existing business and expectation of some new contracts coming in. Uh, Mr. Dalal, no, the 18% growth is based on all the contracts that have actually been signed and where the work is going on. All future contract wins will add uh, to this growth but normally there is a significant lead time. The day I sign a contract to the time I recognize revenue, it's anywhere between 8 to 14 months. Okay. 
So 18% growth that the company is looking forward is based on the contracts, one, worked assets purchase, and will be put to use kind of scenarios. Got that, got that, got that. And uh, just, just related to this, uh, so uh, in terms of the contracts that you already have, uh, in which in which contract do you see you know the additional bit coming in or uh, where we haven't reached the steady state? Uh, you mean the additional? Uh, sorry, what's the word you use? Additional. So uh, the contracts where we haven't reached the steady state. So uh, so hence you will have some growth in those contracts vis-a-vis -vis the last year to this year. So projects uh, in PCMC, CNP operations, and in uh, Varanasi and Noida, where we have existing operations, we feel that the tonnages and the household counts can improve, and that should kind of help us get the extra revenue. Also, the user collection charges in Noida is something which we feel we need to concentrate better. That also adds to the top line. And also, uh, in the, the two power shipping contracts uh, that we bagged, Earlier this year, so one of them has just start has just started commercial operations. Uh, that will start uh, giving full revenue, and the one at PCMC uh, will start commercial operations sometime in uh, quarter beginning of quarter three. Uh, sure, sure. My last question is just related to tax rate. If you see the average tax rate for the current year for the current quarter is about 34, 35. We've been uh, you know having. Uh, uh, tax rate of about 17.5% uh, last year. So any change and will this be the new tax rate? So the tax rates will improve, they will inch up because my waste to energy project is up and running and so that will start coming into the 25% tax plan. So my weighted average cost of tax uh, that normally that we look at would be nearer to 17 to 20% uh, because of uh, the most of the contracts being put into use now. Okay, so it is just because uh, the so the contract revenues are lower, hence uh, the tax rate is higher. Is that, is, is that yeah? So those are basically book entry where you have notional revenue coming through revenue, and that uh, sits on my expense. Okay, okay. So it is just once the uh, Pune project becomes steady state, say FY25, you would have. Uh, tax rates coming back to the 17, 18%, 17 to 20% or in the current? Could be around 20 to 22% because of the, uh, we have shifted to the most of the companies to the new tax regime of around 25. So the max benefit and everything, it will be out by 2025, 2026. So going forward, 25% uh, would be the effective tax rate. I mean, uh, so, so that's by how... Or we should assume that for the full year, the effective tax rate would be anywhere between 22 to 25%. Is that the yes. Okay, okay, okay. Got that. I'll come back for uh, more questions if I have any. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Sandeep, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. My uh, questions have been answered. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Dipti Kotari from Kotari Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. So can you guide us with the future revenue growth and uh, what we can we expect in FI24 and FI25 with upcoming WTE plant commissioning and CND project next year? Uh, so, uh, we would be looking at around 18% core operating growth for the current financial year. Going forward, uh, assuming the contracts are steady state and we are able to hold on to the contracts and uh, the existing contracts which are expiring gets renewed at similar rates, then we should be looking at at least a 15 to 20% growth uh, thereof. If not more, but those are very conservative numbers today. Okay. And so, um, any new project wins will add to the top line. Okay, okay, sir. And so margins have improved year on year and quarter on quarter to 23%, which we had been guiding. Uh, so were there any one-offs which improved our margins? 
So there has been a one-off case uh, which we talk about escalation, but going forward, that one-off is going to be a permanent feature because in the past, the escalation, which is an integral part of our contract, was not given or we didn't recognize it because of the absence of uh, members. Now that has been rectified, and that is something which, on a steady state of affairs, is given. So uh, even if you were to exclude this, going forward, escalations will be an integral part. So our steady state of margins will form 23% as a base number. More importantly, absence of uh, project revenue uh, is also a positive flip on the uh, margins for us. Okay, sir. And so, sir, what kind of margins can we expect going forward? We are expecting anywhere in the range of 23 to 25% uh, based on our inherent uh, core business uh, uh, projections. Okay, okay. That answers my question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Palaksha from Billion Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I just have one question. Uh, so my question is uh, regarding uh, like our core revenues grew by 14% IOI, uh, but bottom line we grew by 21%. So uh, I just wanted to know, is it because of increase in finance costs and income tax? Uh, like, can you explain in detail on these two line items, please? Yeah, so the interest cost has increased from say 5.5 .5 crores to 7 crores. So that was one of the reasons. The second reason, as you said, is the income tax because of the higher deferred tax at my waste to energy project. So these are the two line items which you rightly pointed, which has depressed my fat for the quarter. So due to the base effect and everything, that is why you're seeing it. And going forward, my finance cost will increase because till now I've been capitalizing the interest cost at my waste to energy project, and that will be expensed out. Okay, okay, that one, that answers my question. Sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jagar Shah from AK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, sir, I had just a couple of questions. So you have mentioned in your press release that we are awaiting results on some awarding. So can you share on the kind of projects we have bid for and how confident are we to win the, uh, win the same? And can you also share what are the contract additions we are expecting in FY24? So as we mentioned earlier, I mean, uh, there's a large C&D contract in North that we have quoted for. There is a, uh, in fact, there are a couple of biomining contracts that we have quoted. Uh, and uh, also a couple of mechanical seeping contracts. So uh, all in all, I think we are pretty co reasonably confident, I would say. I mean, uh, but anyway, I mean, the results should be known in in next one or two months. Uh, so uh, definitely by end of quarter three, we should uh, be in a fair degree to, you know, a fairly comfortable position to comment on the success ratio. But all in all, our success ratio is something like uh, we've been two to uh, two or maybe three projects a little bit for. Sure, so that, that answers my question. Thank, thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Rishikesh, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead. As there's no response from the current participant, we'll move on to the next. That is from the line of Kaushal Kadia from Walford PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, can you just throw some light on uh, the escalation clause? What did you say that uh, going forward there won't be any issues because it's inbuilt in the contract now? Approval will be given automatically. Isn't that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. So the escalation clause is inbuilt in the tender and it's as for the tendering process. But uh, since the standing committee was not formed in most of the municipal corporations because of lack of elected members, this was held in abeyance for some time. Now those things are getting uh, rectified and getting processed down. No, but how is it getting... I... To answer your question, when we quote for a project, we quote a unit rate. Okay, and then after one year typically, there is an escalation clause which kicks in, which is applicable, which is renewed every quarter or every, uh, every year, depending on the contractual clause. So, initially the challenge was to get the, the escalation again for the first time around. So now that that has happened, now it will be a regular practice to get that escalation over the years. So 
we will be coaching with the with, with our base base plus the escalator amount. No, no, but tell me one thing. Even for historical contracts, that thing has changed. So how is it free? What can, how, what have you done? Has grown them continuously? How? Explain. Because since, since the last quarter, what has changed that has made the change in the clause? You have revisited the contract agreement. You have sat with the the municipal corporation. What is it? No. So uh, we have not revisited the central clause, sir. What has changed is the last contract with the company back in back end of 2018 and 19. They were due for renewal for escalation clauses 2020 and 2021, but that being a COVID period and the absence of elected members, that could not get acted upon in the new course of time. So hence there was a delay in the first tranche, as Mahendra was mentioning. Now that is partly getting reflected and acted upon clients. So as and when the other clients kick in, those extra revenue will start pouring into the system. So the 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 escalation bit that you didn't recognize in quarter four, when will you recognize it? So some of the escalations were not recognized in Q3 and Q4. So portion of that, so that total quantum is a crores, of which 6.3 crores is recognized in the first quarter. The balance will be recognized as and when the same thing gets passed and the same thing is transferred to our bank account. So it's on a cash basis. that we will start recognizing the same so we expect the entire thing to be recognized in the current financial year maybe going forward maybe into a quarter of the next financial year but that's pertaining only to the historical escalation once these things get ratified then i am also due for my current year's escalation so that also comes into the system okay but how did it was the standing committee finally formed Yes. So the administrator, who is the commissioner in this sense, uh, got his approval from the chief minister's office, and he got it approved under his guidance. Okay. okay. So in the absence of a standing committee, the commissioner is the administrator for the municipal corporation. But uh, since uh, normally the standing committee, which is made up of elected members, approves the budgetary allocation for the entire municipal corporation. In the absence of an elected Uh, assembly, as you would say. I mean, it goes into the chief minister's domain, and he has to approve it, and then that, that's how it gets passed and done. We hope most of the municipal corporation elections happen in the year or two, so things will be back to normal. You said there won't be any issue. I think things are getting rectified now. I mean, uh, the last two years has been bad post COVID. Lot of focus of the government has been to get back to normalcy, and uh, 2024 is when most of the elections, the general elections, everything is on card. So I think things should normalize. So okay, okay. And can you throw some light on the con- the big contract that you 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 said you you uh, bid for some big? So you are not audible. Your voice is not clear. Is it okay now? Hello. Yeah, slightly better. Yeah. Yeah. Also, machine. Am I right? This is for C and D. So we are unable to hear you. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Mr. Kerala, we are unable to hear you. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yes, sir. Please. Hello. 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 Hello? Yes, sir. Please proceed. I'm saying you said you already or you got some new contract. Is that CNT in the north? That's right. Okay. Okay. Will it be bigger than say Varanasi? Uh, it will be of similar size or touch and go go over and there, depending upon the number of uh, bids uh, or the zones it's awarded. And when can we know about that? So maybe by the end of uh, September. See, it's all about the government uh, agencies. So normally they get back to us by end of October. It's almost two months after we submitted the bid. So maybe end of September or uh, mid of November is when we expect. Before the December end, we should be uh, uh, in the know. And how much percent? Even that, how much? How much did it contribute to the revenue in going forward? So it will be very preemptive uh, and premature on our end to give you that number because it's still uh, the fact that you have backed the contract it still has a negotiation platform to be done with the corporation. So it's a very it will be very premature right now to give you that number. But approximately, if you 
can share approximately. I know it's a very far fetched, but if this is to help us, we would not like to explore that number here at this juncture. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, okay. Now? No, sir, we are unable to hear you, Mr. Rishikesh. Hi, am I audible now? Yes, sir, please proceed. Okay. So, uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. So, you said the finance, co finance cost will be increasing going ahead. Uh, so, can you like uh, give a broad indication uh, that what will it be going ahead and from which quarter would it reflect? So, the interest cost will start kicking from the end of Q3 uh, and Q4 onwards. And the quantum of increase will be to the tune of around 2.5 to 2.8 crores per quarter. That's the incremental number that we are looking at. Okay. And would it be same with the depreciation? Will depreciation rise too? Depreciation will also increase because the plant will be put to operation. Uh, that will again increase by a similar number. Okay, so even depreciation by Q3 or Q4, 2.5 to 3 per quarter will increase? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I missed your commentary on the contract revenues. What uh, level of contract revenues do you will see uh, for this year? We expect around uh, an incremental uh, 25 to 28 crores to be spent uh, on the CapEx board at Kanjur and in PCMC Waste to Energy. So that's the incremental number we have. We don't foresee a significant spike after that number. So my question was with respect to the contract revenues. I was about that. We had 48.7 crores in Q1 and we have an incremental 28 crores to be spent uh, in CapEx. So that will add it, uh, contract revenue to say around 32 odd crores for the balance three quarters. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Also, sir, the consolidated EBITDA that we have uh, achieved this quarter around 23%. Do we think this is sustainable for the rest of the year? Yes, that is sustainable. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Gandhi from Glory Tail Capital Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, just want to understand more about how the accounting is done as per in, in, uh, as per in days for the contract project reflected in our project cost and revenue. Uh, so, as for accounting share 115, uh, since the capex are made on certain projects which are of reboot nature, I cannot recognize them in my books as planned and machinery. So, this is a right to charge uh, revenue. Uh, so, we have a note on the revenue recognition on our website. Uh, I will ask Pratik or SGA team to also reach out to you. So, the note is available on our website. You can easily download it. Else, reach out to Pratik and we can send you the note on that. Oh, okay. All right. And I mean, uh, this is just a book entry, not realized in. Uh, yes, this is a book entry. This is a book revenue. There's a uh, expense, but a true cash out in the form of mat uh, limit. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. All right, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Saitu Jacob for his closing comments. Hi, um, I want to express my gratitude to our dedicated team who has worked tirelessly to achieve our goals. I also extend my heartfelt appreciation to our clients and stakeholders for their unwavering support. Together we have built a strong and successful company and I am confident that our journey towards a cleaner and greener future will continue to be filled with success. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, members of the management team.